So Gareth's going to tell us about the, the, the important thing in pool is, is the patterns of clearing up. Because when I first got, went to China and started playing pool, I thought, oh, this is easy. I'll just get to well, I'll smash the balls up and I'll pot all the balls. Yeah. But the amount of times I potted four or five mon balls and finished up in no man's land. Yeah. Because you're playing positional shots like a snooker player. Yeah. And you're not thinking correctly. And so that's the most important. Is that the most important part after the break off? Is yeah, patterns? it is. It, the patterns are the most important part because you're exactly right. Obviously, somebody you know that cues and pots balls like you do, you're not really going to miss too many balls. Yeah. But what you can do is you could definitely take them in the wrong order. Yeah. And if you take them in the wrong order, as I said, it's a bit of a puzzle. Yeah. If you put them pieces in in the wrong order, when you get to the end, it's like, oh. Yeah, because I, I was walking around the table, oh, this is, this is here, clear. And then all of a sudden I'm like, Hang on. Yeah, hang, <laughs> hang on. on. How do I get from yeah. that to that? Yeah. So, yeah, it's all right potting the first three or four balls. Those are easy, right? Pot yeah. that one. Those are, then all of a sudden it's like, oh no, how do I get from there to there now? Yeah. And then how do I get back to the eight ball? Yeah. And what we do is, or what the top players would do at eight ball is, they sometimes would look at a finish, look at a pattern, and then work backwards. Yeah. So, for example, in this instance here, I've set a little bit of a pattern up. Yeah. So, I have one problem which is the, the red ball tied up next to the yellow. Mm -hmm. um, what I've instantly looked at is, okay, I'm gonna cannon into my problem. I like to have other options rather than just landing on the ball I'm cannoning into. Yeah. I've got that option here. So, you, so you'd rather, if you've got a problem ball, rather take away as soon as possible? As soon as possible, which yeah. gives me You wouldn't leave options. it till last. To, no, because to, if no. I leave it until last, imagine that these are the last two balls, yeah. reds on the table. I cannon into that, if I don't land on it, yeah. probably lose the frame. Right where I'm almost guaranteed to land on something else in this yeah. instance. And then what I mean by working back is I've already worked the pattern backwards to know that this is going to be my last ball because it offers the best position yeah. for the eight ball. Yeah. If I was to take this away early, yeah. there's traffic getting back to the sure. eight ball, yeah, there's yeah, problems. Yeah. So instantly I'm going to play the cannon, hopefully land on and this play one. The, play those reds first. Clear this end of the table so the cue ball's doing less traveling. Yeah. And I've left, already left my last ball. Right. And would you say that's like a, a common mistake? With, you know, they, 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 they leave that to last. They, they, they just try and pot the balls first. Yeah, so it would be just, oh, I can pot that one. Yeah, I can pot that one. As amateur players, it would just be, they would probably think that if they've got less balls on the table, they're winning. Yeah. Well, you're, not, you're, you're absolutely you're not. You're actually yeah. losing. Yeah. So, you know, if we're playing and you've got one ball left on the table and I've got seven, yeah. then you're probably going to lose the frame because yeah. if you're playing against somebody that no, well, if just two amateurs are playing down the pub, it's like, oh, I've got two balls left, you've got seven, yeah. I'm winning. Yeah. Uh, at the top level, it's the opposite to yeah. that. Yeah. You've actually been unlucky, you're going to have to swerve this. Yeah, so I've actually half sunken myself, so a little. Yeah, and some, some from then on, I mean, it's, it's automatic, but so that's. From that, then that's, on, it's yeah. automatic. Um, obviously, what I'm trying to do is angles are so important. I think right. as snooker players, you know, you're trying to get like good on balls, get straight, where at eight ball, you just want to leave the natural angle all the time, so the right. cue ball's doing the work. Right. right. Um, as long as I get pretty straight on my last ball here, offers position to, to the eight ball. Yeah. Imagine this ball wasn't here. I've now got to play a little bit of a positional shot to get to the eight ball. So working the patterns out, working backwards and right. taking them in the right order is, is absolutely and everything. With that cue ball being smaller, are you avoiding topspin most of the time if you can? Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you can avoid topspin and if you can avoid using the rails, so it's yeah. just stop shots, little stuns. Mm. And what pool players do, and I, I personally think this is the reason why pool players struggle in particular at snooker, is because as a pool player, we play almost every shot with a little bit of side. Right, okay little bit it enhances it that you can see with a spotty cue ball yeah and it's sometimes only little half turns of side that you're just manipulating and spinning the cue ball yeah, around yeah. but most shots we play with side spin right. snooker obviously you just want playing ball playing ball yeah and, and when pool players get on a snooker table when you start playing shots with side especially yeah. over and a bigger cue ball a bigger yeah. cue ball obviously yeah. it's pushing off line yeah let's, let's finish off this this won't take this won't take long I suppose the one thing with pool, when your opponent's clearing up, you're getting back to the table quickly. Because it's taking you, what, yeah. 15 seconds to clear up? So that's a lesson. If you've got a, 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 tight, a tight ball, get, it, get rid of it as soon as possible. Open it up as soon as possible. Yeah, so there I've left you know, the, the, the perfect last ball. Yeah. I had the perfect breaker ball that gave me all of the options. And yeah, if you can get rid of your problem as early as possible, 
and have a perfect ball to get onto the eight ball, yeah. you should really clear up. Easy as that. So I guess one of the most obvious differences in snooker and pool is obviously the break off. Snooker, the break off, you're trying to get safe. In pool, you're trying to pot a ball and, and create the opportunity to clear up. Yeah, um, and at the top level, of course you're trying to pot a ball, but at the top level, if you pot a ball, you're sort of supposed to clear. Yeah. You're supposed to hold your serve if you make a ball. Um, yeah. So it really is sort of uh, the standard now is that you know, there's matches that happen where you're playing a race to seven or eight, and almost every single frame, maybe bar one, yeah. will be from the break. Okay. And all it comes down to is the person who had a dry break. How, I was going to say, out of 10 breaks, how, how many would be dry, as you say, not pot a ball? Yeah, I mean, at eight ball, there's no given system that guarantees you to make a ball. Right. So I can't say to you now, if you hit this here at yeah. this pace, you're guaranteed Which to Which Chinese make, eight ball? Which there Chinese was, eight ball there, there is, there yeah. was, um, because they use a magic rack. They set the balls up in a certain way, they set them lower. Yeah. The difference is, imagine drawing a cross between the corner and the middle. The eight yeah. ball at English pool sits in the middle of that cross. Right. At Chinese pool, the front ball sits on that spot. Okay. Which means you get the wing balls into the middle. Okay. So that's the difference. So at English pool, there's no given formula to say, if I hit this here at this pace, you're going to make a ball here. So all you can do is hit them as good as you can hit them, yeah. time it as well as you can, and basically pray to the gods that right. you make a ball. Okay. So there's still, there's still a bit, there's not a lot of set, there's not a 100% certainty. There's not 100% certainty, but what you're trying to do is, <laughs> the thing that I see happen the most with amateur pool players is when they strike the cue ball, what happens is they, as soon as they strike the cue ball, the cue comes up in the air. Right, okay. So what you're effectively doing is losing all of the power right. up into the air, up to the ceiling. Right, okay. What you want to do to, to generate the most powerful break is firstly keep the tip in contact with the cue ball for as long as possible, right. hence why we call it driving down through the bed of the table. Right. So you're keeping the tip in contact with it as long as possible. What that's then doing is keeping the cue ball in contact with the head ball, yeah. the front ball, for as long as possible, right. which is then generating as yeah. much power as you can possibly get going through the pack. Right, because ideally, because you did the second break you did off, you want the cue ball staying in the middle of the table? Is Stay, that right? Yeah, staying in the middle of the table. It's hard to stun it dead right. because it's lighter yeah. and smaller it, it, to get it to just come back and stop. Yeah. So what most players try and do is imagine that there's a four or five inch little window on the back rail. Right. That's where you're trying to get the cue ball back into. Okay. okay. So that would be the perfect break of getting right. it back within that window. Obviously no side spin, because a yeah. side spin means you can head towards yeah. the pocket. Um, and keeping all of the power driving through the pack. Really and you, important. You want, and you want to hit this red full on, right? Hit that red full on because you're trying to hit this target here. Yeah. So, you know, imagine if we sort of draw in a, you know, a little, I've made it, I'll give it a little bit bigger for myself yeah. there. So imagine we, we draw in this target of we're trying to get the cue ball back into this area. Okay. What's really important is not to get too much backspin and not right. to get too much topspin. Okay. Too much backspin means the cue ball stays in contact with the front ball for less because right. what it's trying to do is it just wants to spin and fizz yeah. off it. Too much topspin, you can't generate the power. Right. So it's a stun. But because the cue ball's lighter, it acts like a screw because it's lighter. Yeah. So what you're effectively doing is stunning it keeping it in contact with the front ball for as long as possible, generating all the power, and trying to get the cue ball into right. this. So is it middle of the ball you're aiming then? Middle of the ball. Right, okay. But the problem is when you're really trying to ramp up power and yeah. drive down through the bed of the table, and yeah. you're coming out, your shoulders effectively coming over the top of the shot to get your body out of the yeah. way, hitting the middle of the cue ball, especially when it's that small, isn't it? Yeah, easy? yeah. So I suppose that this, the only similar shot in snooker is when you're got the blue to try and smash the pack off the blue you want yeah. to hit exactly full in you the want face. to hit exactly full in the yeah. face and obviously spin it back yeah. off it yeah yeah so that's effectively what you're trying to do in hit it full and it, uh, it's fractions of margins which can be the difference between right. and off into the middle would be a pretty bad shot because you yeah. almost hit it like quarter yes, ball yeah. what the most common one because you're trying to get it back to here the most common shot is the screw back into or the okay. stun back into the right, corners okay. yeah as a pool player that's just the complete bugbear. Yeah. When you when you hit it and you see it flying back to the pocket instantly, yeah. it's well, just it's the same, like, same as I say that that shot going. If you go into the pack, you hit that half ball and going off there. Yeah, it's not unlucky. Yeah, it's a terrible shot. It's a terrible shot. Yeah. So if I screw that straight back into one of the corners, yeah. it's because I've only hit it three quarter ball, not right. full ball. Okay. So at that level, you have to. So accept it's not just getting down and just a blind hit with power. You, no. you really yeah. got to hit it properly. And depending on how each table's breaking, there's loads of variants, especially yeah. at the top. Depending on how each table's breaking, I would maybe inject 
a little bit more power, I would maybe take a bit off. If I want to pop the cue ball up into the air, I can strike down on it and pop it, which makes the balls do different things. There's quite a lot of skill in okay. the break. Right. Um, if I want the cue ball to come back flat, I would open my hand and get like a flat back swing and then just get it coming back okay. in a straight line. If I want it to pop up in the air, I will... It's almost like golf, isn't it? Getting yeah, there's loads the of different react, chip shots right. and where you'd come to. Yeah. So if I wanted the cue ball to be popped up in the air, I would then come higher on the take back and yeah. pop down over the white that would okay. basically get it get bouncing it jumping. into yeah. the front ball. So there's loads and loads of different things that happen with the break, but all you can really do is hit them as hard as, not as hard as you can, but with enough power and control combined yeah. and hope you make a ball. Okay, so give us your stock break. So I hit them with quite a bit of power, Yeah. fractionally caught the ball off centre because yeah. the cue ball hit here and my target's here, Yeah. so you're in danger of going in off. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't go directly in off, you can get kicked in off. Yeah. So although it was a lot of power, it wasn't the best connection in terms of the front ball. So right. you have to find that balance of maybe taking a bit of power off. Yeah. Like at the golf, yeah, yeah. maybe you're going to take a bit off your drive to sacrifice hitting the fairway. Yeah, but you're, I mean, you're still, you're going to win the frame from there, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>